So the question was about mature defenses, or the question was, what is it? Is it possible? I'm wondering what it looks like, what it feels like, what. Ultimately, you're building an ego that's a reality reality tester. Mental health is going to reinforce super ego, toxic super ego. which is reinforcing denial and uh, fantasy. Because the therapists and the experts are going to give you prescriptions that are short-sighted and meet your emotional need. And the prescriptions are shortcuts where the superego controls your behavior and controls everybody else's behavior. And then you have to set boundaries forever and ever. And then if you're a good narcissist, then you can enjoy eating other people's boundaries. That's how, that's what they're teaching. <laughs> Maybe they don't even know it. <laughs> Maybe they're possessed, but they're teaching people to, to enjoy setting boundaries and running over other people's boundaries. That's, that's a super ego pathology. That's a toxic super ego. That's a God complex. Because it's exhausting playing God. Long term, you have the fun, but you've got to keep enforcing it. It's a lifetime job. Boundaries, very important. <laughs> so the alternative is now, this is a hard spin. The spin is that you have to stop judging defenses. <laughs> and going a little deeper in resolving the conflict <laughs> resolving the conf the conflict right now is re resolved by splitting <laughs> and when we resolve the conflict by split splitting you project it onto a third party <laughs> and you act out the repetition compulsion and it just never ends because the person you're projecting on doesn't have the script <laughs> they don't know how to finish the story <laughs> and you're giving them a script to to reject you or to keep it going. So you're not even given in the script to finish the, <laughs> the repetition portion. So if you can change your mind step to integrate the conflict, then the defense drops. Then the repetition compulsion drops. There's no more need to act out the split anymore because the conflict is integrated. The memory is processed. The hate allowed him to feel the emotions underneath the hate, grief, sadness, and guilt. Expressing and feeling that grief, sadness, guilt, those core emotions, reverses the denial, reverses the devoicing, reconnects the voice, reintegrates it. But if you're hanging around therapists and yourself and other sadomasochists that are self-hating, <laughs> they're policing anger. So any sort of authentic expression that will get to the sadness and the grief gets quashed, gets smashed, gets denied. So you have to change the mindset to meet the need, but you have to allow space for hatred and anger and conflict. See, un unaddressed guilt is the engine. So if you can feel the guilt, then self-punishment has no fuel. If you can feel the guilt, express it, integrate it, self-punishment disappears. Self-hate has no more purpose. Now that self-punishment can be directed on something more useful other punishment or a new punishment. I don't know. Stop wasting it on old patterns. <laughs>